I'll start with the five minute round here uh, by saying initially Judge uh, Hunt, uh, Judge Hibbler was one of my first recommendations for the federal bench. He's an extraordinary jurist, an extraordinary person. And I think uh, it'd be a great positive experience to have served as his clerk. Can you give us uh, your own shorthand version of the Hibbler philosophy on judging? Thank you for that question, Senator Durbin. Um, Judge Hibbler was an amazing man um, who treated all of his law clerks like we were family. I think that if you ask anyone what they remember about him, it was that he was gracious and kind and humble, very respectful. I was fortunate to sit under him and watch the way that he handled himself in the courtroom, that he handled himself at settlement conferences, and really how he treated the litigants who appeared before him. It says something about him that criminal defendants who he had sentenced would write a letter thanking him afterwards because he treated them with such dignity and recognize their humanity. That is the primary lesson that I try to take with me every day um, since I have been on the bench as a bankruptcy judge. And that's the point I'm glad you raised because I think it's so important. These are lifetime appointments. I think you all understand that, which means that if you win the approval of the Senate, now that you've had the nomination of the president, uh, there's, there could be critics and there will be, I'm sure, but this is your life's calling at this moment. And I've seen judges that have used that graciously as Judge Hitler did, and in my terms of practice, I've seen the opposite. Judge Cummings, you've seen a lot of courts and courtrooms, both as a litigator and as a judge. The demeanor of the judge is an important factor, is it not? Yes, thank you for that question, Senator. I think the demeanor of a judge is incredibly important. Uh, number one, in terms of treating everyone who comes into that courtroom with respect and dignity, and the parties, the attorneys, and with respect to the attorneys, expecting the best out of them, and showing that by your example of always remaining uh, with a calm demeanor in a professional way and not letting uh, your emotions run away with themselves. I think it's also very important for a judge to project humanity to everyone who comes before him or her, whether it's in a naturalization ceremony, or it's in a, an arraignment, initial appearance in a criminal case, or whether it's in a settlement conference. It's very important for the judge to have a human connection with the litigants and the attorneys who appear in front of him or her. Thank you. Judge Gaston, what's been your experience? My apologies. Thank you, uh, Senator Durbin. I would echo the sentiments of Judge Cummings. I think that it can be easy for us to think of procedural due process as something in a, as a dry academic exercise. But what experience shows us is that when people come to court and feel that they have truly been heard, they are willing to accept the outcome. Um, people don't necessarily expect in every case that they bring to be successful in the outcome, but they do want fairness. They do want a chance to have their day in court, and I think that is fundamental to the rule of law. Judge Shu, I would like your comments as well, but I certainly am struck by your parents' decision to come to America for the princely sum of $100 a month to go to college. <laughs> if you would like to comment on your parents or your role as a judge, I'd appreciate it. I, I'm so grateful to them. I, I, I'll leave the judge question because I don't think I could answer it any better than uh, Judge Cummings and Judge Gaston and uh, Judge Hunt just did. Um, I, I, I agree with you that demeanor is incredibly important. But I am so grateful for my parents that they, both of them independently, um, uh, made that huge leap of faith coming to a country they knew nothing about um, uh, to start as essentially a new life. Um, uh, it, it, I heard my father recently described himself to someone as just an ordinary guy. And I had to tell him, you are not an ordinary guy. Um, uh, he accomplished more you know, at the age of nine than I can hope to accomplish in my lifetime. That's a great comment. Ms. Almadani, would you like to comment on the judges that you have uh, had an experience uh, in the courtroom with? Thank you for that question, Senator Durbin. 
I've been very fortunate to appear before many different judges in the Central District of California and in front of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. I have found that those judges who listen to the party's arguments, who do their research, who come prepared, are the judges that we, we most appreciate. And so unlike my fellow panelists, I have not served as a judge. I recognize that. If I am so honored as to be confirmed as a judge, that's the kind of judge that I would be, someone who faithfully applies the law, who's open-minded, who listens to the arguments and gives the parties an opportunity to be heard. Thank you.